Just days before critical economic relief programs are set to expire for millions of Americans, Congress is working out the details on a new stimulus package estimated at $900 billion, a major climb down from the $3 trillion House Democrats initially sought. The last-minute scramble to come up with something follows a flood of new data on the staggering economic devastation from the pandemic. Nearly 900,000 people applied for jobless benefits this week, the highest since September. And nearly 8 million Americans have slipped into poverty since this summer. The new plan is expected to include direct stimulus checks of at least $600 per person, half the amount provided in March, as well as an extension of unemployment insurance benefits and money for businesses, as well as rent and food assistance. What's not expected to be in it is funding for state and local governments and liability protection for businesses, a demand of Republican Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Congress faces several upcoming deadlines, including a midnight Friday deadline to keep the government open. Extended unemployment insurance under the CARES Act expires the day after Christmas, and a national eviction moratorium expires on New Year's Eve. Joining me now is Bishop William Barber, co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign. Uh, and Bishop Barber, thank you for being here. I know that you met with members of the Biden team today um, and presented to them what you and the Poor People's Campaign and your allies would like to see done what was said in that meeting, and what do you think came out of it? We had about 22 people, Joy, that met with them. We had impacted people. One lady that knows 41 people that have died from COVID. We had white farmers. We had Latinos. We had fast food workers. Uh, we had um, uh, public health um, um, professors and economists. And we basically said, when you look at the reality of where we were before COVID, with 140 million poor and low-wealth people in this country, and 700 people dying a day from poverty. And now we have over 8 million have been added and nearly 3,000 people <clears throat> who um, are dying from poverty a day. These, you can't heal the nation without healing the body. And the body is sick with systemic racism, systemic poverty, ecological devastation, the war economy, denial of health care, and misguided spending. And so what we, we laid out for them, 14 points, I think you may have them there, 14 points that we have to do, beginning with comprehensive, just, and full COVID relief, not one policy, not just one action. And uh, we, what was interesting is we said we didn't want to meet with Biden and Harris now. We wanted to meet with their top policy people, Susan Rice was there and others. And after the, elect, the, the inaugural, Joy, we want to meet in the White House with poor and low wealth people, economists, public health officials, and moral leaders, because this is going to require long-term and fundamental transformation uh, in, this, um, in this moment. Biden said to 1.2 million people when he met with us in September that changing poverty, ending poverty, would be at the center of change in his administration. We said to them, we have to make sure that we, are, we hold to that, because it's the only way out of this mess that we're in. Let me play for you very quickly. This is, uh, this is that moment when uh, now President-elect Biden spoke to the Poor People's Campaign. Here he is. At your forum last year, I promised you that we'd not only talk about it, but we'd do something about it together. And I want to be part of your movement. So, so that just to establish that, you know, that that is the commitment that he's made. But he's not in power yet. And the people who are in power now are putting together a, a deal that would be $600, a one-time payment. A Missouri Congresswoman-elect Cori Bush, uh, she said that they're going to act like the difference between $600 and the $1,200 that was there for a big deal uh, for the, that were there earlier is infuriating. I've been unhoused, she said. I've lived paycheck to paycheck. The difference of $600 is having a hotel room or sleeping in the car. $1,200 was already the compromise. So she's saying the compromise is not good enough. We're facing a time when Black and Latino Americans are twice as likely to lose their homes because they're more likely to rent um, than they are to own. And when billionaires like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and other billionaires uh, have raked in more money, just untold amounts of wealth from this pandemic. What do you make of this negotiation that's only going to get the average person 600 bucks? Well, first of all, you're right. $900 billion, almost a trillion dollars of what billionaires have made. We have people who sit in the Congress who get free health care, who make nearly a quarter million dollars a year, some of them from just from us, and we pay for their health care. And now they're compromising and negotiating on the backs of poor people and low-income people who are dying, because it's not just people are dying. Poor and low-wealth people are dying. E even among black people, it's poor and low-wealth, white people, and so forth and so on. And then they want us to call this a Christmas miracle. It ain't a Christmas miracle. It's a Christmas mess. 
uh, and its meanness. Uh, McConnell has only wanted to give immunity, liability for immunity to corporations um, and not want to do right by all the people. You know, it is, if, if I was in the Old Testament, Joe, Joe, uh, Joy, the, the phrase that we'll be using is the bands of wickedness. This is just outright meanness and wickedness in the middle of a time when people are dying. And they're so mean, they're hurting their own constituents. We know we're going to we may get whatever. It's not compromise. It's capitulation. It's the least amount they can do. We got a lot of work to do after this, because remember, we were already in a whole lot of pain. And what we said today in this meeting, going forward, Neoliberalism is not going to get us out of this. Trickle down economics is not going to get us out of this. You're going to have to focus from the bottom up on poor and low wealth people. But the blood of the people that are dying are on the hands of Mitch McConnell and these senators who refuse to do right by the people in this country. And it, it is just mean, it's a mess, and it's a form of political wickedness and political violence. You know, and I want to note that Mitch McConnell is now only saying that he wants to do a bill because he's worried that it's hurting the two Senate candidates in Georgia. And among the people who've gotten debt relief already have been mega churches. Joel Olstein got a lot of money. Um, friends of the White House, like Paula White, her church got a ton of money. Even the Church of Scientology got a lot of money. I think they can afford to give money to average Americans and more than 600 bucks. But that's me. I will not put that on you, Bishop William Barber. Thank you very much for your time tonight. That is